If you grow mushrooms, you'll face times when you harvest the flush and have to ask yourself, do I go for another flush or do I toss it? And when you do get rid of it, I hope you're not throwing it in the trash. You can compost it. Hey guys, welcome to the North Spore channel. Louie here, and I'm gonna show you how to incorporate spent mushroom substrate into your compost. This is so important for reducing waste building better soil, and ultimately growing more food. Because mushroom compost is already used and trusted commercially, so why not make your own? Now I've got two blocks right here that I just harvested. These are now spent mushroom substrate. It is now a really, really valuable byproduct that I can utilize in my garden. To understand why and how we utilize it, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what's inside. Mushroom substrate like this is most commonly made from hardwood sawdust, whole grain like millet or wheat or rye or oats, and a nitrogen booster like soy hull or beet pulp or alfalfa. Many other things can be used. It depends on your region and what's available often. The most common mix, what we have here, is a variation on master's mix. Master's mix is just a 50% mix of hardwood sawdust and soy hull. It's not just the nutrients that all of that soy hull and sawdust brings that makes this such great compost. When we process this, we are sterilizing it. And so any weed seeds, any diseases, any bugs, all of that is getting killed. And then we're introducing our beneficial fungal organism to the mix. As you grow, you can get and will inevitably get molds and bacteria growing on your substrate. But what's cool is that stuff doesn't thrive outside. It all balances out. And in some cases, like with green mold, trichoderma, it's actually beneficial to your plants. When you use nutritious material and make good compost, you're avoiding the use of synthetic fertilizers, which are expensive and have other environmental costs. So let's utilize a waste stream for good and create more value out of it, huh? We're in a nice main backyard with a three-tier composting system. And right here in front of me, we have a pile that was pretty neglected. It had accumulated material for a few years and we just turned it. And I was actually surprised to see how rich the compost is. This is great stuff. You could add the spent mushroom substrate to this. I think that addition of nutrients would be good for it. It would really like the sawdust especially but it's not the best to add really unfinished material to finished material that way. So I'm just gonna show you how to make a pile from scratch. I think it'll help just to lay down the very basics of composting before I start. Your goal is generally to do two parts brown to one part green. Your browns are wood chips, paper, leaves, all of those really woody materials are browns. Then you have kitchen scraps and seaweed, and those are greens, and even our spent mushroom substrate blocks. We're gonna sort of count those as greens. And so you want that two to one ratio, and you wanna end up with about 25 to 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. As long as you're also adding aeration, and water, it will compost and you will end up with something totally usable in your garden. To make my compost pile, I'm gonna be putting down a layer of hardwood chips, then I'm gonna put kitchen scraps on top of that and my broken up SMS blocks on top of that. Finally, I'm gonna seal it all in with another layer of wood chips and water it all in. So there's our dinky pile, guys. It is just a demo. And I did that to show you what kinds of materials to use and the ratios so you can scale that. And I'll just keep adding two times as many browns as greens and building this pile up. And I have access to so much spent mushroom substrate that by the end of winter, this thing's gonna be full. Thanks for joining me in the North Spore backyard. This raised bed here isn't just a raised bed, it's actually a steam tank that Nortspor used for years to pasteurize probably thousands and thousands of pounds of substrate. And now it has a second life out here in the garden. There are lots of different kinds of spent mushroom substrate. I talked a little bit about this earlier, how you may use different supplements to add nitrogen and different woody materials. 
and our mush bucket uses straw primarily. It's got straw, grain, and tons of mycelium in there. And when it's spent, it makes fantastic mulch. You can use it to help put a bed to sleep in the fall, which is exactly what we're gonna do today. And it has tons of nutrition and will compost in place. It's gonna provide numerous benefits, including reducing erosion, insulating, keeping in moisture, and it could even fruit a few mushrooms here and there. All you have to do is open this up, dig in there and break it up and spread it in a nice, nice even layer. You don't wanna to go too thick, but a few inches is okay. Nice and even over the whole bed. Don't take my word for all of this. Check out all the research that's going on around the world, looking into this remarkable substrate and how it can be used in biochar, which is an amazing agricultural ingredient, in vermicomposting systems, as animal bedding and animal feed, and much, much more. Here at Norspore, we throw all our spent mushroom substrate and material that we can't use for whatever reason here in this trailer, and farmers come by to pick it up and they compost it create rich, rich soil out of that, and a lot of them get more mushrooms along the way. Who knows how much food this waste has helped generate? Seriously, if you don't have enough spent mushroom substrate and you're interested in using more in your yard or agricultural operation of any kind, reach out to local mushroom farms. They'll probably give it to you for free. I promise there is so much more to say about spent mushroom substrate and composting. Please comment below, help us steer the ship. Check out our other videos on YouTube and check us out at northspore.com. Thank you.